Welcome back for the third part of the lecture. This part of the lecture will be again on feature interactions, but after looking what are feature interactions, how can we handle feature interactions, we will look for strategies, how to avoid them, uh, how to uh, also document them uh, if they cannot be avoided. So the choice of features is actually not very easy. Um, what are good features for a product line? We already talked about domain scoping, uh, but here's a picture of John Ferguson Smart uh, from 2017 uh, that I found on Twitter. And this uh, picture basically illustrates what are the possible kinds of features that are out there. So there are features out there the, uh, the customers, the users actually asked for. There are features that are actually needed, so they will uh, use those features also in practice. And there are features that are delivered. And then there are certain interactions of these sets, ideally. Uh, the ideal situation is that uh, all these sets are uh, like 100% uh, the same. What you deliver is what you needed and also what people ask for. But in practice, this is a different story. So what you deliver and what is needed is kind of the business value. So this is where you give your customers, uh, give the users of a program a certain value of using uh, the product line or the product. So this is where we want to achieve. And it's interesting that only part of this is actually features that uh, people ask for. So even if you would do everything that people ask for, it's not necessarily everything that they need. And uh, there would be even cases where something is what we call shopping list feature is a feature that people ask for, but they would probably not uh, uh, need it or not use it very uh, frequently. Then there's some missed opportunity, which means that features that are needed that no one asked for and you, that you haven't uh, delivered yet, um, this is a missed opportunity for the business value. Of course, the business value can be larger if you uh, implement, if you deliver more of the needed features. Then there's some unused features. This basically means you delivered features no one is using. Uh, you can track this uh, by means of checking which features uh, are actually used in your uh, later products or by looking at the configurations of customers, of users of the product line. And then there's unnecessary features. And this is kind of the subset of delivered features. Uh, you delivered features people asked for, uh, but they're not needed. Uh, and then these are unnecessary. So the idea is to identify what are chopping list features, what are unnecessary features, what are unused features, and what is actually needed, and to identify this missed opportunity and make sure that you um, select many of the features and deliver many of the features that are actually needed. And this brings me to uh, a quote from John Carmack um, that I found. The important point is that the cost of adding a feature isn't just the time it takes to code it. The cost also includes the addition of an obstacle to future expansion. The trick is to pick the features that don't fight each other. So this basically means we do have features that can easily be combined, uh, that where there's not much effort to combine them, but there's features where we have more effort, where we have more maintenance effort in the future and things like that. And we've seen one example in the previous part of the lecture where we looked at the interaction of shortest pass and weighted. And deciding to implement shortest pass and weighted as features means we have introduced this obstacle for future expansion. We have introduced uh, some additional maintenance effort because we need to make sure that the combination works depending on the strategy that we've chosen for. So interestingly, it means, it means for a product line, we not only want to uh, cover all the possible features in a domain, but we rather want to have a selection that has not many uh, features fighting uh, against each other. And while the statement is also true for a single system, this is even more a problem for the product line with um, heavy interactions in terms of features. So another example, um, there's uh, the uh, very old picture uh, from 19, uh, about uh, at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. And when Henry Ford said, any customer can have 
a car painted any color that he wants, so as, as long as it is black. Uh, this basically was a statement uh, from like advertisement, from marketing. So this car was only delivered in the color black. It was on purpose. So it was not that they haven't thought of other colors, but they found out that the black color dried faster, so they were able to produce the cars faster, so they were able to produce more products uh, and have a cheaper production in the end. And this was a certain decision in domain scoping, where, and it comes from some interactions. It comes from th something in solution space. So still people in marketing would like to introduce more colors for those cars, uh, but uh, in terms of like the production, in terms of the solution space, uh, there might be reasons against this decision of having multiple colors. Of course, for today, it's, uh, it's uh, very rare that you find ca uh, cars that are only available in one color. Um, so it's a bit provocative uh, when looking at this now, but it's interesting because introducing new features can have problems and uh, simply restricting features also leads us to the fact that we have uh, uh, might have some advantages, for instance, fewer interactions of features. And then there are some interactions that are left. It's, uh, we cannot completely avoid interactions. Uh, we talked about, uh, or I gave some examples where the decision, the management decision, uh, the domain scoping can reduce the number of interactions, but there will always be interactions that cannot be prevented and that cannot be fixed. And the question is how to document those, uh, those interactions. And we've already looked at the strategy one in the, uh, in the first part, uh, in the second part of this lecture. And it was basically to document the interaction in a feature model. But what happens in practice if there's no feature model at all? So I already raised the problem of the Android apps that are interacting, where to document this. There is no feature model uh, available for all the possible apps and what are the possible combinations uh, and which combinations make problems. Uh, so the question is where to document this. And I will show you one example where a feature model is not available, but there's some documentation of interactions and about compatibilities of certain features. And uh, this example uh, is a bit more extensive, but it's interesting because it's uh, showing how, uh, wh what is a possible strategy to document the interactions. So we're talking about Lenovo's option compatibility matrices. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is basically a set of EXIF files. So there are seven current EXIF files and there are uh, even older ones. And for these EXIF files, uh, we have each EXIF file even contains different tables uh, for every uh, computer, for a series of a computer. And for instance, the table for a ThinkPad X series uh, has 28 columns and over 500 rows. So every column stands for a particular model and every row stands for a particular um, yeah, accessoire that you can buy in addition to that uh, computer. And the cell basically contains an information whether it's compatible or not. We will see examples in a minute. So basically uh, we have different kinds of interactions and to not repeat them again. So there are certain food nodes. So they're uh, then referring to uh, in those tables. Uh, you can have a look at the, the current state of those tables also by clicking on the link on the right hand side here, but I will show you uh, some interesting uh, parts of it. Uh, so this is the Excel table opened. Uh, the columns contain the different uh, notebooks, not all shown here uh, because of space reasons. Uh, and we have the rows. The rows contain a certain uh, accessoires that we can use uh, or might want to use. So we have internal and external drives that we want, might want to use together with our notebook. And then every cell contains some information if there are information available. Uh, for instance, uh, an X means it's compatible. Uh, you can use it uh, with uh, together. And if there's a number in there, it means there is a known feature interaction and there's some more explanation to this in terms of a comment. And then there's a large table with all those numbers and all the possible descriptions. And 
we can see that the strategies that we've discussed in the last part of the lecture are actually re reflected over here. So for instance, if we look at the line uh, 314 over here, then we will find the strategy S1 being implemented here because it basically says that we can only have this, uh, this connection for certain models or for certain areas. So it's not always feasible to combine those uh, together. So it's not documented in a feature model, but it's documented in these large tables that tell you whether you combine certain uh, artifacts or, or certain uh, parts or not. Then we have other examples like uh, 315, uh, 318, and 320. And in those cases, whether the strategy S6 is applied. So what does it mean? In the strategy, we said there's a derivative module. There's an additional module that kind of makes, makes sure that the interaction is um, well implemented. And over here, it's we do have a particular uh, uh, device that allows us to use and assemble uh, more than uh, uh, one hard drive, for instance, or different um, yeah, adapters that uh, things can be used together. And then we have uh, 316, uh, 317, which are kind of an instance uh, of a strategy that is not clear from this table. So uh, it can be uh, any of the strategies resolving the interaction, but it was uh, resolved in a certain version of the BIOS, uh, uh, of the software, of the uh, uh, drivers of the basic drivers of the computer system. So it was the interaction has been identified, then it was solved, and you can combine it. You can combine the different uh, uh, features like the notebook with a certain other hardware. You can combine it only if you have the newer version at hand. And then in the last example, we find an instance of uh, duplicated modules and for instance uh, this is happening for different um, yeah uh, power supplies so there's a power supply with less uh, for less power consumption and a one for higher power consumption and we've looked at this uh, for implementation this would mean we have a duplicated implementation and they have actually providing two different modules over here so in this part of the lecture, we looked at how to reduce the variability, how to reduce the variability in order to have fewer feature interaction or to have fewer fights of features. Uh, which features are actually needed? We looked at different kinds of features that are out there, including unnecessary, unused, and shopping list features. And the idea is to pick the right features for uh, the business use case. And if there are still feature interactions, um, we can still decide even there uh, there is a, a certain business value and it's needed by customers uh, to decide we will not offer this feature because it's the interactions are not worth it uh, and if interactions are still in the system then we need to document them and we can even document them if no feature model is available for instance by means of these compatibility matrices there's some further reading and you could check uh, you could think about the problem, who actually checks the compatibility of Lenovo products? Uh, is it the customer? Is it Lenovo itself? Is it uh, other people uh, providing uh, devices uh, that you can combine with Lenovo products? So I hope you enjoyed the lecture and uh, we hope to see you again for the next part on uh, analysis of product lines. See you.